Hi boys and girls, my name is Mrs. Grover, um, AKA Science Granny. I'm gonna be making a series of um, different investigations and science lessons for kids about your age, somewhere between eight and maybe 10 or 11. Um, mostly I focus on the fourth grade standards because I taught fourth grade for so many years. But I think you'll get something out of it and have a lot of fun no matter what age you are. So what I'll uh, give you right now is my um, my email, I don't know if you can see that. And my email is sciencegranny50 at gmail. So if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please email me and I'll get right back to you. Um, I hope you can stick around for the lesson, the whole thing. It won't take long, it's about a half hour. And then you can do that on your own with your parents, or maybe you'll get the stuff in ahead of time and do it with me. I'm looking forward to uh, working with you. We've got three areas of science that we're gonna be covering. Life science, which is animals, plants, human body. Earth science, earthquakes, via, via, uh, volcanoes, weather, space. And physical science, last heat, sound, light, magnets, simple machines. That will be our last area. I'm gonna be doing these lessons for a few weeks, so hopefully you can join us every Friday and then you can decide when to do the activities on your own, or like I said, you can do them with me. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. I'll be right back with the lesson. Bye. Okay, stop. Now I need to... Okay, this week we're gonna focus on um, animals and in particular birds. We'll be investigating how birds' body parts meet their needs for food. Uh, stay with me while I discuss some info about animals and birds and some ways that they adapt to be able to meet their needs. Then we'll do the investigation. Okay, we'll start with some vocabulary. The features of animals is what we're going to be talking about, basically. We have two different kinds of animals. Verte ones with vertebrates, which is a backbone. It's basically an internal skeleton like you have or invertebrates that do not have a backbone. They either have car cartilage or a shell that supports their body. Um, where do you think birds would fall? Vertebrates or invertebrates? Think about it. Animals are many celled living things that cannot make their own food. This is in the body parts section, at body types, once again. So they have many cells, but they're not able to make their own food from their own bodies. Uh, body support. Animals can be divided into two groups based on what supports their bodies, and that's where we talk about vertebrates and er, invertebrates. Okay, we're going to be talking now about how animals adapt, so ad animals adaptation in particular their body parts. An adaptation is a body part or behavior that helps an animal meet its needs in its environment. An environment is something that surrounds and affects um, an animal. It could be uh, other animals, plants, any air, soil, everything that surrounds an animal is its environment. And one of the things that they need to survive is oxygen. That's a gas in the air that's needed to breathe and survive. They also need to have shelter, a place to protect the animal from other animals or the weather. The adaptation is a body part that helps an animal meet its needs for these are three of the needs that it needs that it needs to have to survive and so we'll talk about that um, next okay boys and girls there are an, animals have five basic needs that they need that they have to meet so they can uh, survive basically they have the need for the right environment and climate the environment like i said is all the things that surround the animal where he lives rock soil air water other animals plants and so forth and some of the environments um, that you can think of are desert, ocean, rainforest, where a climate is an air, uh, something that, that happens all year, every year. So they, it's the, uh, if it's a climate of uh, a lot of snow or cold, or if it's a climate where it's very warm and dry, those are kinds of things. They have to meet both those things to be able to survive where they live. They also have the need for food. food is used for energy and they need that to live and grow. Now, some animals only eat plants and those are herbivores like zebras and giraffes. Some eat only meat, which are carnivores. They're lions, leopards. 
and others eat both, which are omnivores, and that would be like a bear. Um, they also need water. You drink water. We dr the animals need to drink water as well. Um, you can actually only live three days without water, so it's the same for animals. They can get their water from ponds, lakes, streams, um, even watering holes. A lot of elephants drink from watering holes. Another area they need, another need is shelter. They need that to protect them from other animals or predators and as well from the weather. Um, some animals can live in a hole in the ground, others live in trees, some dig tunnels underground, some even lived under rocks, but they have to have that shelter. And of course, like we said before, we need oxygen. Most animals breathe oxygen like we do through their lungs, but some ocean animals have to come to the surface to breathe like whales. Others like fish get oxygen in the water through their, a body part called gills. So they need all five of these um, needs to, so they can survive. Um, how animals meet their needs is what we've been talking about, these five. Now, before we move on, I wanna show you that I made a chart and I have this copied on my website or my Gmail that you can also uh, copy. Another thing I did was I made it on a construction paper like a poster. That way you can really look at it easier and study it more. Once again, it's all on my uh, my, my email, grant, uh, science granny 50 okay? Okay, like I said, we're gonna talk about birds and adaptations that birds have to meet their needs. Once again, an adaptation is a part of body part or behavior that helps the animal meet its needs in its environment. One adaptation for birds are feathers. That helps them keep warm and dry and also helps them fly. And you can see these blue parts right here are like the fe their feathers. Another adaptation for flying is that they have hollow bones. So all the bones inside this, this bird are hollow. They're filled with air, which makes them light. And the, that along with their wings can help them fly. Birds that don't fly like ostriches have an adaptation so they can run fast. Penguins have an adaptation for moving in water. Neither of those birds fly. Almost every bird's body part, from their beak to their feet, from their beak to their feet, is an adaptation that helps meet its needs. Next, we'll do the investigation. Okay, we're going to do our bird beak investigation today. And what we're gonna start with is that we're gonna use a model to find what kind of beak works best for picking up and eat, di eating different foods that birds eat. We have materials that we need. We have uh, chopsticks, which you should have in your home if your parents eat ch uh, Chinese food. We have pliers. Your dad should have some in his garage. We have forceps. If you don't have forceps, you can get tongs, like you uh, flip things on the stove, a spoon, sure everyone has a spoon, and a clothespin. Those are our five tools that we're going to investigate with different foods. The different foods that we're going to investigate are raisins, uh, peanuts in the shell, uh, I bought gummy worms, but you can use plastic worms, uh, rice, cooked rice, and of course, bird seed. So those are our different foods that we're gonna test with our different tools. Now to keep track of which one works well with the other, the first thing we're gonna do is you'll put your, um, you're gonna use your chart that you will need to make. Um, I have it on my email if you wanna copy that or download that. And you're gonna make a chart with the bird's foods, the five foods that we're gonna use, different tools which will represent the beaks, and then your observations. Did it work or was it too hard so that wouldn't work with that bird beak? And like I said, you can get that downloaded from my email to do this on your own with your parents. All right, so once we've done that, we're gonna have our tools on your left side and then our food on the right side. And in between, we're gonna have a plate. So we're gonna try the different things with the different tools. I'm not gonna take the time to do all five. We'll, we'll try to do a couple together and then you can kind of be on your own, okay? So that's the first thing. Okay, so the pliers will represent a bird with a short, thick beak, more like you would see in a, a house bird or bird in a cage. The 
uh, chopsticks would be a bird with a long skinny beak like a lot of the seabirds and I have some here that I have decorated in my house. Um, the food, the worms and the nuts kind of represent some of the foods they eat. Doesn't mean they eat raisins and plastic worms, of course they don't, but something like that. And we'll see which ones where their beaks will be able to pick up easily and some that they just wouldn't even go near because they can't do it. They don't have that adaptation. Okay, so we're going to put one type of food on the plate. Let's start with peanuts. So put a couple of peanuts on the plate, if you can see that. So I put a couple peanuts on the plate and then we'll start recording on our chart like you made. The bird foods will write peanuts and then we'll try the five different um, tools and see if that's easy to pick up. Now, the birds like a cage bird have this kind of a beak. Let's see if they would be easily able to pick up peanuts. And a little bit, but I'm not sure that that would be something to do it. Maybe like a, a parrot or a larger cage bird might be able to do that. So we can put on our chart the, the pliers, uh, our observation, that's doable. So maybe large cage birds like parrots and those kind of birds might be able to do that. How about the spoon, which would be a bird like um, a pelican? Yeah, that wasn't a problem. So I think a pelican or those type birds would be okay. So once again, adding that to your chart and the observation that that works. Now, how about the forceps? So birds with long skinny, they might be able to pick up a peanut, but I'm not sure that that's the kind of food that they would want, but they would be able to. And how about a clothespin? Also works. So, so far all the birds could, could have some kind of a food like a peanut. Chopsticks, well, I'm not very good with chopsticks, but not so easy. So the long, the birds with long skinny beaks, not sure they would attempt something like a peanut. Okay, now we've finished with the peanuts and you've finished doing your recordings. Let's try bird seed, a little bit of bird seed here. And let's see if we can easily, don't forget to put in your chart that we're doing bird seed now. Let's start with the spoon. Yeah, kinda, but Birds that have the, the spoon bills, they, they don't really like bird seed. Those are really for kind of domesticated animals. With chopsticks, don't forget to write this down. Not gonna happen. So the birds with the long, thin beaks, they're not interested in seeds. How about clothespins? Nothing, nothing. So those kind, nope. How about the, the birds that have short, stubby beaks? Yeah, it worked. Not probably the best, but it does work. So they're able to get that. But the forceps, one at a time, not as easy. So I think the ones with the pliers or the short stubby beaks probably use bird seed the most. But they're adapted to eat bird seed. Don't forget to record all five of the tools with bird seed and then your observations. And then you'll do the same with rice. Let's put this back in the container. Let's try some rice. This rice comes from El Pollo Loco. Not sure birds go there to eat, but let's see if the short stubby beaks, they would be able to, but not, that's probably not the best. How about spoon? A spoon belt, they would be able to eat stuff like rice, yes. How about a clothespin? Yeah, kinda, not probably the best. Chopsticks? I know people eat rice with chopsticks if they know how to use them. So long skinny beaks, they could eat rice. If they see rice on the ground, they probably would eat it. The seabirds. Forceps, yeah, kinda, no, maybe not the best. So you decide which one's probably the best uh, area and you put that on your observation for rice. Now, the next one we're gonna do is raisins. Let's try first the Get that out of there. Let's try the clothespin first. Well, if you pick up a bunch of raisins, that works, but individually, kinda, probably not the best. Spoon, yeah. I think what you're gonna find is spoon build birds, they can eat just about anything. Chopsticks, maybe not so easy. I was able to do it, but maybe my beak or like the long seabird's beak, maybe not so easy, and so forth. So we'll continue doing that and recording that 
for raisins with the five different uh, be or tools, beaks, tools, whatever. Now we have worms. Let's see how easy it would be for a, a cage bird with a short stubby beak to pick up the worms. They could do it, but that's pretty big for their tiny beak. I don't think that would go in their gullet and where they eat. I don't think that would work out too good. How about the spoon bill? That's not even the best for the spoon bill. So he's probably not gonna be interested in worms. How about the chopstick, the long thin beaks? If you're good with chopsticks, I know you can do this. I'm not, but it is doable. And then the forceps, easy peasy, that one easy. So I think those birds with that kind of a bill could eat the worms easy. I think I did them all. Spoon is even kind of difficult with the worms, although it is possible. Don't forget to write all this stuff on your observation chart. Record the five different foods and then use the five different tools and make an observation which one you think was more suitable for that particular kind of food. All right, so that was kind of fun. Now, uh, it's your turn. Go get the materials if you want to do that on your own with, with uh, your parents or if you want to do that with me again and play this again. But that is the end of the observation, but stick around. We're gonna do a little review and put everything in perspective. Okay, so let's draw some conclusions about what we did today, our observation. Which kind of beak is best for picking up each food? You should be able to decide that on your observations on your chart. Which is best for crushing seeds? Now, see, we didn't try to do that, so try to do that. See if you can actually crush seeds with a clothespin or a spoon or a forceps, whichever one is better. And then by observing the shape of a bird's beak, what can you infer about the food the birds eat? In other words, what can you decide is, is appropriate for that beak? If the beak is long and skinny, will he be going around trying to pick up bird seed? Probably not. So you, we need to infer which one is the best. All right, students and scientists use models to help them test ideas. How did using a model today help you test an idea about bird beaks? Hopefully this kind of gave you an idea about different bird beaks. And what I'm also hoping is that um, from this point on, you'll get interested in observing some birds and actually bird watching. Um, and so on in my email, um, email site, I've actually included some ideas about where you can go investigate birds and check out what kind of beaks they are and kind of watch how they, um, they eat and their bird beak. All right, let's put this all in a summary right now. Okay. To summarize what we did today and talked about, animals have some needs in common. These include the need for the right environment and climate, water, food, shelter, and oxygen. Each type of animal meets its needs in its own way, such as lions meet their needs a lot differently than birds do. Uh, review questions, what is an environment? Remember, anything that surrounds the animal, rock, soil, air, other animals, etc. What are five big basic needs all animals have? We just talked about that up here. Which of the following is not a need of animals? Food, oxygen, clothing, or shelter? Which one do they not need? Okay, this is what is on my email that you'll need if you want to get the directions and uh, conclusions and so forth. I've got a copy that'll be on the Gmail that you can download of the investigation itself, the materials you need. And also I have a copy of the chart that you'll need to do the investigation, as well as the page about drawing conclusions, the summary and the review questions. There's also going to be information that you can download about going bird watching and what it entails and what you can learn about birds on your own. If you can uh, have your parents take you on a hike or somewhere where you can find there's a lot of birds around. All right, I would like you to send me an email, whether you want to do any of these pages or not, and give me some feedback. Let me know, get some comments. Um, do you like the lesson? Uh, if you could suggest something different, or if you just want to uh, communicate with me. Now, I'd like to thank my assistant and editor, Aiden, who happens to be my grandson, which is why I'm called Science Granny. And we'll see you for more fun next week. Bye. Have fun in science.